guys, thank you so much. And I'm so thrilled to be the only woman tonight. Woo! Uh, 50% of the world, 25% of, of the speakers tonight at school. We're getting there. Um, so my name is Aviva, and like our wonderful uh, host said, I came to Israel in 2011, and I started working in the film world. And after working on other people's projects for a few years, I was like, yalla, I want to do something of my own. I want to fuse documentary and humor and get into talking about social and political issues. So I got together with my really good friend, talented uh, artist, Danielle Angel, and together we created Avi Does the Holy Land. So what is Avi Does the Holy Land? It is a web series, a satirical mockumentary web series, inspired by the likes of Borat and um, the Colbert Report. So Avi is a fictional journalist, Avi Schwartzberger. I play Avi. I am not Avi. Aviva is my name. People get confused sometimes. So Avi is this fictional journalist who uh, thinks of herself as a cross between Barbara Walters and CNN's Christiane Anamankour and Kim Kardashian. She's like a, um, a party girl who really wants to get the real answers about the Arab-Israeli conflict. So we started producing this web series and we were telling our friends and people in the industry about it and we started to get offers from people that wanted to join and help out. And we were like, yalla, come help us out. So the project team grew, and we had an amazing team of people who were editors and directors and social media writers, graphic designers, doing all kinds of things just for the pure joy of doing the web series. Nobody was getting paid, all of us had jobs, and we were doing this in our spare time. Uh, we, were, we, were, um, we were spending some money uh, to buy snazzy outfits from Alan B and uh, Tafana Marquisite for Avi's costumes. And we created the entire first season of episodes again just as a passion project. So I'm going to show a trailer from the first season. Hi, I'm Avi, a Canadian Jewess. I went on a birthright trip and fell in love with Israel. This is my blog about the most contentious state in the Middle East. Welcome to Ali Does the Holy Land. Like literally blacks are like the opposite of Jews. Well, no, I guess Muslims are the opposite of Jews. Um, So we, um, so we dropped, thank you. Thank you. so we dropped uh, the first episodes and we started to get a lot of traffic. People really liked it and really hated it. Um, and they were watching it and it was really exciting. We started to get press, local press, international press. I think my favorite headline was, Avi does the Holy Land is way more than just falafel and blowjobs. I think I'll have that on my tombstone. Um, and, and we're getting thousands of views, hundreds of thousands of views from all over the world, again, from fans and hate watchers alike. And we're getting thousands of followers on social media, and it was super exciting, and we're all really happy, and it's like, this is amazing. And then, oh, I wanted to show a slide of some of the, uh, of, of some of the responses we got, um, really engaged community of, of um, so here's some of the things, people couldn't tell if Avi was real or not, so th this is sometimes the comments would be, would be like this, do people not get this as a joke? Uh, hashtag somebody make it stop. What an idiot, she's adorable. What an idiot this chick is, brilliant parody. I was like, that's, that's great, that is, that is satire. Um, and so we're doing well and we start to get offers from all these different places of, of, of groups that wanted to collaborate us, collaborate with us. So different YouTube channels, NGOs, brands, and we started doing all these different projects and we're working on all these different things. We made an app, 
Uh, we did a VR 360 experience. The star is actually in the back. We'll, we'll talk later. Um, uh, and, and it was really exciting. We had, we had Israeli media companies asking if we could collaborate with them. And then we got invited to pitch at IDFA, which is the largest documentary film festival and film market in the world. And we went and pitched our project for funding. And we had interest from all these international producers and broadcasters that said, we want you to take Avi and, and change it so that it will fit our local audiences. So Germany, in France, in the Netherlands we had an offer, in the US and Canada. And I was like, yalla, wow, yes, let's do it. Let's do it all. I'm invincible. We're invincible. We can do anything. So we started doing the projects, but things, uh, things were hard. It's hard. It's hard to do all these projects and try to come up with it with a, with a second season. So, so we're working together on this on the second season and all of these projects. We ran a, a crowdfunding campaign that was actually really successful so that we could do the second season of episodes on our terms. And then in the meantime, we'll also at the same time, we'll also come up with all this new content for all these international producers. And we're working, and everything's great, except I feel like I'm on top of the world, and I'm forgetting about the rest of the team that's working with me. So you see, I had told people, come, come collaborate with us, collaborate with me, and you will get your vision also to be a part of this whole thing. It won't just be my vision, it'll be your vision. But in reality, I wasn't really interested in other people's vision, okay? I was really just interested in my vision, and I kind of became a diva. And we had a wonderful team that was working super hard for practically no money, and I wasn't really, really including them in stuff. Uh, one time we had one of the team members who worked for hours and hours and hours on a new cut, uh, editing something, and she was like, look, I want to show you what I did. I think it's really cool. I watched half of it and was like, nah, let's just do my idea. She was furious. Another time, uh, we were filming an episode, and two of the people that were directing me were giving me all kinds of comments, as you should as a director, and I refused to listen to them. I was a total diva, completely unprofessional. Needless to say, there was a blowout, and a number of the team, people on the team said, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. And you know what I said? Fine, leave. I don't need you because I'm invincible. Look what I did. I did this. And so people left. And I was like, this is fine, well, I'll be fine. I'm, this is great. So we continue working, and it's hard. It's hard to do all these things that I'd agreed to do. And the team now was smaller, and, and, and they had other projects. They'd been, working, they'd been working with us for a year and a half, or two years, and it was, it, people were getting burnt out. And eventually, it ended up being just me and my co-creator, Danielle. And then she decided to get married. And, <laughs> and I was like, Danielle, you need to spend all of your time with me. I don't care about your paying job. I don't care about your wedding or your mother. You need to work on Avi. And so she backed out as well. And then it was just me sitting in Florentine, depressed, looking at a blank screen alone, thinking, I have no ideas. This is really horrible. Why did I do this? Oh my god, I want to quit. Why didn't I just go to law school? I think a lot of actors have that feeling. You're like, why didn't I just go to law school? Why didn't I listen to my Zeta? I didn't listen. To, I don't even think I could get into law school. But you always think, oh, I should have gone to law school. Anyways, I'm depressed and and I'm freaking out and 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 I had to say to all these international producers and uh, and broadcasters that uh, sorry, I can't do it. And and I backed out of the project. I backed out of a bunch of projects. And what did I do? Well, I was depressed for a while, I think I said that. And then, and then I banged my head against the wall for a very long time. And then I picked myself up and said, okay, like, let's just do this. And I went back to some of the collaborators and I said, I apologized for being an asshole. And some of them came back, some of them didn't. And then I, and then we got some new people and we made a second season of episodes and I think they were good. I don't think they were as good as the first time. Um, but what was the failure? I did not realize the importance of the team. I completely took it for granted because I was on a high of how successful I thought I had been uh, because it was my idea. But the truth was, even though it was my idea, an idea is nothing without execution. And who executed it? It was this incredible, passionate team that I had completely taken for granted. So um, there's a few of you here that were part of the project, 
and I just want to say I'm sorry for being an asshole. And uh, so the lesson is don't be an asshole and and and, <laughs> and and really like like creating is hard. It's it's swimming upstream through mud. It's so hard. And so if you're not gonna have fun with a bunch of other people and you guys can like whack your heads against you know you're hitting your head against the wall, at least hit your head against somebody else together. <laughs> don't do it alone. Um, yeah. So that's it. That. Birthright has picked that up as their promo video. I know. That is. Woo. Wow, that was everyone's birthright experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have any questions? Any questions? Oh, yes. Uh, what was the turning point for you to go back into doing uh, the Avi series? Um, just the question was, what was the turning point in terms of uh, turning around and doing doing the next thing? We did a crowdfunding campaign and we told like hundreds of people, thousands of people that gave us money that we would do it. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to give the money back. We spent some of it. I guess we got to do it. It's honestly what happened. I would have quit probably if there was no crowdfunding campaign. Uh, what about continuity? So we had one very successful season, second follow up, like. What about the first one, and why did it stop? All right, question about continuity. You had the first, you had the second. Why did it stop? What's next? I had a baby, um, but I'm, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> She'll, she's like the little, little Avi, gonna bring her along, and it's gonna be birthright baby. Um, <laughs> you just got that now. <laughs> birthright baby. Um, but I'm also working on two other projects now. And I have a day job that pays my bills, because this doesn't pay my bills. So if any of you guys are investors that are interested in art by passionate people that deal with Jewish identity, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, one more question. <coughs> one more. Yes. Uh, are you still a diva? Are you still a diva? Uh, why don't we ask my partner on that all fair? Are you somewhere? Am I, am I deep? Yeah, I guess I'm still a diva, but I try to be more, I try to be more aware. Like, I don't have Jerusalem syndrome. What's the one where you think you're Jesus and you go in the wall? That's what I had. So I don't have that anymore. All right, give it up to Aviva.